Welcome all. It's my pleasure today to welcome 2019 Aurora Prize Laureate and Director and Co-Founder of Airbridge Iraq, Mr. Mirza Dinai. So Mr. Dinai, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So to start off, the Golden Apricot Yerevan Film Festival is taking place. It's an annual film festival held in Armenia, and you are one of the jury members. So I'm wondering what you thought about the experience, what you thought about the film festival. What can you tell us about your time working with the people at the festival? So thank you very much again. Um, so it was a nice experience. It's my first, uh, first experience to join as a jury member of uh, of, uh, of an international film festival. Definitely, I would uh, uh, not judge the films uh, from the cinematographic perspectives, okay. but mainly from the human rights, humanitarian perspective, especially that the films that I have seen until now were uh, actually the regional film from the area, Armenia, Georgia, Iraq, Syria, so this region, Iran. Uh, and uh, I'm happy I was a member of this jury. I, uh, I got also a lot of experiences from, from the colleagues who are the members of jury and professional people. And when looking at the humanitarian aspect of these films, uh, what caught your eye? What drew, drew your attention? What, how do you think directors and people making films can stay true to that humanitarian yeah. aspect? Well, for me, it's actually how far is uh, these films, the subject in, in itself, how far it is near the suffering and, and the reality and the suffering of the people. This, I think, the most important uh, the issue that I have to, to, to each other, I have checked. Because if, if it is a real story, how the impact, and maybe I made also some imagination which kind of impact these kind of films have on the public uh, opinions or the generally on the people who see it. Mm -hmm. And there's four juries. You are part of the regional panorama jury. So can you explain exactly what that means? What was the difference between all these different ah, juries? There are, there are different commissions. Our, our films uh, belong to our mandate, so-called. Uh, uh, only uh, They were only films from Middle East. So they, we had uh, from Armenia a couple of films. We have from Georgia, from, from Kurdistan, Iraq from Syria and Iran. So these the regions that we call Lebanon. So this was the region's regional film, which means region uh, related to the region. International films that mainly are international films that, uh, that coming from other countries, from Europe, from other places. Mm -hmm. And I also want to speak about your humanitarian work. Um, obviously, uh, you yourself are a Yazidi and you have worked in, in Iraq. We mentioned Airbridge. Iraq as, as well as the House of Coexistence, which we will get to. Um, I want you first to remind our audience what the Yazidi people faced in the mid-2010s, in 2014, 2015, that led to uh, the humanitarian work which you conducted. But what originally did they face? Well, uh, you know, in 2014, Yazidi were victims of uh, a genocidal act uh, committed by ISIS fighters who are considering the Yazidis as infidel, therefore justifying their killing and enslave their women and children. And, um, and unfortunately, this genocide is still ongoing because we have still 70% of our community outside of their region. They couldn't, back, they couldn't return back to Sinjar. So this is actually somehow a kind of consequences of this genocide are still ongoing in, in, in the region. And the humanitarian need is definitely still very huge in, in the region. Are some of the Yazidis of Sinjar starting to return home now, now that the war is only, over? Well, only 30 to 40 percent. Uh, the rest of them, 20 percent of the community escaped from Iraq totally. So we have in the last eight years, about 100,000 left Iraq. And uh, the rest of the IDPs that are they are in the in the IDP camps in Kurdistan region. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there's also the initiative of the House of Coexistence, which I believe is being supported by the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative. Um, this is partly also being done because Sinjar still finds itself in the middle of a feud between the central government and some regional forces. What is the idea behind the House of Coexistence and? Can you tell us a bit about the progress of the construction of the site? 
Yeah, so House of Coextents actually is the completely, totally uh, funded from the Aurora grant that I got in 2019. Uh, it, it took about two years until we finished the house and the garden is completely finished now. We are going to open it this month, uh, end of this month. And the idea behind that, because the region is completely just like a desert, there are no facilities, no cultural centers, no cultural initiatives in the region. And uh, I, w I wanted to, to give a, a, a positive uh, a sign to people to see that there is some development, there is some progress in the area. And therefore, we, we built this house as a multifunctional cultural uh, house of three levels with uh, different seminar rooms, hall we named, for example, one of the hall, the main convention hall, we named it after Ararat as a recognition for the uh, victims of the Armenian genocide. We named every corner of the center with different name of Iraqi personalities or people from outside of Iraq who uh, who had a role in uh, in peace building or in coexistence or understanding among nations and religions. And we have also a garden of two hectares with the symbols of all eight Iraqi religions and ethnicities. ethnicities. And the target is to have different uh, peace building projects, peace education, um, livelihood projects, development projects in the area in order to to encourage those people to return back home and in order to establish a kind of peace and coexistence reconciliation in that area. And I think every, every region that has uh, experienced the, such kind of, of atrocities of genocide is in need of new, fresh blood and, 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 and positive signs in order to encourage the people to to, to, to say that we are not alone and that we are not left alone and not hopeless. So I think this is a kind of bringing hope to the region. And it's also about like an exchange of ideas, creating a forum, similarly to the Golden Apricot Festival in a sense. Exactly. We have, for example, an, 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 an amphitheater for, for open air cinema. We think if we have in the future partnerships with different to, to establish also kind of festivals and, and do things there uh, uh, as well. So uh, at least to bring the region, it is, it is still a dangerous region, I, I would say. And, uh, and the, the, the soul of the war is, didn't leave us yet. But I think with such kind of initiative will, will change the mood of the people. This is uh, what, what I hope. And do you think also in terms of, of film, there is a way to eloquently exp uh, expose and raise these issues through cin cinematography? I mean, uh, what, during your experience at the Golden Apricot Festival, did you see that uh, humanitarian issues were being brought to the forefront through an artistic manner? It's, um, it's extremely important to have this relationship, this gap between this 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 uh, link between cinema and human rights and humanitarian crisis because cinema is one of the best way how to express the situations everywhere in the world it is not a, uh, uh, cinema is not um, the, uh, a part of uh, uh, a emergency reaching out the communities and policymakers in order to bring, to to bring awareness about those those uh, bad experiences, but definitely uh, it is important to have uh, each time a feedback, an idea, what has happened, to tell the people the truth. And therefore, it's important if there, if there is uh, serious cinema making uh, and filmmaking uh, to, about the different issues in the world. Isn't there also an importance of audience for people to be willing to watch films about very dark issues? Because you hear many people would say, I don't want to watch something that is about such a depressing topic and all of that. Do you think that's important for people to push themselves into the cinemas? I think, uh, I think uh, it, is, it is a kind of a duty of film directors and, and producers mm -hmm. to find uh, a way how to, to bring the normal people to digest even those heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is also uh, because the, 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 at the end, the director or the producer 
is ask to have a good product in order to uh, let the people come and join and sit. And this is, this is um, definitely people need to know about them. I, and you shouldn't uh, close a door and say, I don't like to hear anything outside of what, uh, what I see. The, you should have somehow uh, a vision to, to know what's happening around you. Good things and bad things. So the bad things are giving you experience to, to avoid, maybe to encourage the politician to stop uh, all kind of supporting atrocities and, the, and good thing to give you a good start and, and fresh blood in order to, to, to go on in the way of humanity. And it's also interesting that knowledge, knowledge exchange between uh, different peoples that have experienced similar histories, for example, Armenians and Yazidis. It's always interesting when you hear Armenians speaking about what happened to Yazidi people and when Yazidis people speak about what happened to Armenians. What do you think about the relationship between Armenians and well, Yazidis? Well, let me tell you something as I uh, as I was first time during the Aurora ceremony 2019 here mm -hmm. And uh, a short film was broadcasted uh, about myself, about my experience. One of the Armenian people came to me from here on the street. He could speak a little bit um, the, the English and he told me, you know, as I saw that, my grandmother uh, was telling us every time what was the situation as the Armenian people escaped from the genocide to do and wanted to go to the mount. They supposed if they go to the top of the Mount Ararat, they will be saved. And I saw the pictures of the Yazidi people who escaped from ISIS to the Mount of Sinjar. They didn't know they, they are going to, to stuck there. So it is, you know, uh, uh, the, this generation of Armenian people, they didn't see um, genocide of 1915. But the stories they have been, that have been told, and then you definitely you will compare it what's happening to you and to, to, to other people, nations around you. So speaking about this, so common uh, issues that we both of us were victims of, of, of genocide and the perpetrator were somehow similar. But, uh, but even if you have, we have as Yazidi and Armenian, we have other very stronger relationship because we share the same places. So the, the, this, the, this area, the, and uh, of Middle East is the we, we live together since thousand years. Yazidi and Armenian share also a common history in the past, even before Christianity. Uh, and uh, but uh, nevertheless, those people who are either the the generation, the uh, grandson and granddaughters of, of of survivors, or even we as survivors of the com of, of 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 the current genocide. When we hear anywhere else in, in any part of, of, of on the globe that there is a atrocities, we have directly the solidarity with them. We have solidarity with, with people in Myanmar, uh, although we are Muslims and, and, and our community was supposed to be killed by some bad Muslims. But nevertheless, we have we have uh, solidarity, big solidarity with Myanmar people or with Algor people in China because we know what's happened to us, we know what's happening to them. It's just the same, we, we experience the same pain, the same suffering. It's very personal in a sense, isn't it? And it's also about trauma and interracial, intergenerational trauma and relating to each other as people. But don't you think also that that trauma also gives a unique perspective to Armenian and Yazidi people by experiencing suffering and persecution they almost look at the world in a, in a different way than other Definitely. groups that haven't. Do you think that, in a sense, is, is a perspective which is valuable? Definitely, yes. So uh, we know how people who survived in, from different atrocities, how they have another vision about the world. It is not uh, only a life that you are living in negativity and die. No, this is... Uh, this, these, uh, these uh, uh, people, they are uh, really, they, uh, they uh, hang on the life and they, they, uh, and they are strong and then you become stronger. If you, if you are injured, then you, your vision, you open your vision to other perspectives and you have uh, even stronger soul to survive.
which is usual in all other human beings, not only the Armenian and the Yazidis, even by the other communities. So your first time in Armenia was in 2019? No, uh, it was tw uh, 2012, as the first Yazidi temple was built by Mr. Zelvayan in Armavir, and I was so happy it was to come here and to see the, how the harmony and the relationship between the Yazidi minorities in Armenia and Armenian folk in general, is how strong is it? And to be honest, without to give any complimentary, but but uh, the only place that the Yazidi can enjoy everything what they think from person uh, to, to, to their religion without to be concerned mm -hmm. and, uh, and get stigmatized is here in Armenia. And I'm happy to, to come every time to Yerevan for that. Yeah, you've become quite a regular visitor to Definitely, Armenia in the last few yes. years. And you plan to come again, I'm yes, sure. Sure, sure. Well, Mr. Dinai, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.